Welcome to the channel. In this project, I'll be showing you how I make a resin and wood hybrid ornament. The idea started when trying to develop new pieces to showcase at some of the art shows I attend. I had some cutoffs left over from some cherry barrels that were cut down for bowl blanks and I wanted to find some use for the material. I knew that I wanted to incorporate resin into the design but wasn't quite sure of the exact direction I wanted to go in. So far, the method I've been using which is shown in this video has given great results and I wanted to share it with my viewers. Since cherry barrels have such awesome texture with the bark, I decided to incorporate this into the piece and highlight this aspect in the resin. After cutting the blanks down to two square inches, I attempt to match up both sides to even out the gap, and then mark each piece to ensure alignment later on. After laying down a base color of titanium white, I come in and highlight all the ridges with some turquoise and then complement that with some orange along a few of the high spots. The goal is to add some points of interest that grab the viewer's attention when they're looking into the resin. On some of the previous pieces I've made, I've used different base colors and tinted resin but the white base with a different colored highlight is my personal favorite with clear resin. For this project, I'm using Total Boat Tabletop Resin. I'm not doing a thick pour here, so I haven't had any issues with thermal cracking at this dimension. I do make sure to lay down extra in the mold since the bark is porous and will absorb a lot of it. After leaving the mold in the pressure pot for a day, I begin removing the water resistant foam board. Most of it peels away cleanly by hand or with the help of a chisel.
After the mold's removed, I take the blank back out to the shop and hit the end with a thicker wood base on it to flatten it and add some tooth for adhesion. This way I can mount a sacrificial tenon to it. If you watch some of my other videos, then you know I use hot glue as an adhesive for holding and mounting small projects. I've used this method successfully many, many times over, and I just make sure to take care not to take too heavy and fast of a cut. Otherwise, it's possible to break the piece loose and toss it off the lathe. From here, I'm just going to round the blank out to a cylinder. Out of all the different cutting tools I've tried, I find the bowl gouge to work the fastest without chipping out the resin. Once I have a cylinder, I'll start shaping the base of the ornament, focusing on centering the resin area the best I can. If you try this project at home, then you can choose any shape you want the body or base to be. Personally, I like an oval shape to the design, but you do what you like best. Now that the blank has been rounded, I begin removing a lot of access material. I'll remove an inch or more off the end of the blank before moving on to finalizing the overall shape of the piece.
With the shape of the base finalized, I start off dry sanding with 320 grit and then wet sand from 600 to 2500 grit. Once sanded, I'd finish up with triple E polish before separating the piece from the rest of the blank. Moving on to the next step of the project, I begin cutting one inch diameter blanks from a board of Purple Heart I've had sitting around the shop. I then take a seven inch cutoff and mount it up to start making the finials for the ornament. I cut the finial in segments since I'm working the piece unsupported on the end. This helps avoid chatter and flexing which would ultimately break the piece.
to ensure the finial mounts flush to the base of the ornament's body, I need to create a beveled undercut. The process requires light cuts and forces me to work over the chuck, so I definitely make sure I'm not wearing anything loose that can be grabbed and pulled into the lathe. After I create a quarter inch tenon and cut out the bevel, the finial is separated. As you can see, the upper finial follows the same process as the bottom, with one distinct difference. The end is left slightly larger with a button to allow enough support to insert a screw for the hook.
Well, I hope you really enjoyed this video and get to try this project at home. I had a lot of fun making this piece and also hope it creates some inspiration for your own projects. Please like this video and hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll see you in the next one.